Hello, YouTube frogs. If you've ever looked at Xiao and thought to yourself, man, I wish that my other characters could Xiao just like him. Well, wake up and welcome to my all-in-one guide video on Xian Yun, covering all you need to know to have every character that you love or hate Xiao all over your opponents. In this video, I'll be going through her talent set and how to play her, or rather how to play with her, constellations and their impact on her gameplay, best choices for weapons and artifact setups, recommended stats to have, and the team synergies that she enables. Let's begin. Talents. So Xian Yun's core gameplay revolves around her enabling others to be able to Xiao, which comes from her burst. Activating her burst first deals AoE Onimo damage and heals your entire party based on Xian Yun's attack. Star Wicker is then summoned and follows the active character, giving them the following buffs. Periodically heals your entire team based on Xian Yun's attack. Grants 8 stacks of Adeptal Assistance to your whole team, which grants increased jump height. Every plunge attack consumes 1 stack of Adeptal Assistance and deals a coordinated attack of AoE and Nemo damage from Shen Yun. The healing that she provides from this ability is very reminiscent of Jean, but is a lot more spread out and healed over time rather than a big front-loaded heal that Jean provides. Both Shen Yun's initial cast and overtime healing are AoE, which differs slightly from Jean, who has an AoE initial cast, but whose overtime healing is just for the active character. And while Star Wicker has Adeptal Assistant stacks, the active character will also receive an additional damage boost to the Plunge Shockwave from Shen Yun's A4 passive. This passive is just like what Shen He provides for Ayaka or any Cryo DPS. For those that don't know how this mechanic works, it essentially adds additional damage that is additive after a character's base talent damage has been calculated that then scales with elemental or physical damage bonus and crit damage. So visually, that would look like follows. You have the character being buffed, for example, Ayaka or Xiao, and then you have the character who is buffing, for example, Shen He or Shen Yun. Hypothetically, let's take Xiao. So we first have Xiao's talent multiplier damage. For him, he's attack scaling, but depending on the character, it could be attack, HP, or defense scaling. Then you would add Shen Yun's buff amount, which is just an additive number, combine these two, and then you would apply Xiao's crit and damage bonus from his goblet, crit damage, from any additional damage bonuses, this gives Xiao's total damage, ignoring defense and resists. Obviously, this is very heavily simplified, but hopefully shows you where the buffer's damage goes. It's really strong because it scales with the hypothetical Xiao's crit and damage bonus. The bonus that Shen Yun provides from A4 passive is 200% of her total attack, capping at 9,000. This is achieved when Shen Yun is at 4,500 total attack, which is pretty high. It's difficult to hit this even with her signature weapon and triple attack main stat unless you have really high attack percent substat rolls on the flower and feather. This additive damage bonus that she provides is incredibly high and is also not tied to any talent levels. As a brief comparison, Shen He is on her skill, and at level 10, it's 82% of her attack, 5 times per party member. Shen Yun's buff is 200% attack, 8 times, but for the entire team, total plunge attacks. So while Shen He's buff is massively lower in value, it is per party member, so there's a rightful trade-off between the buff amount. In general, expect Shen Yun's A4 buff to be significant enough that almost anyone in the game, if they can plunge attack, can become a plunge damage dealer now. And in my opinion, this is pretty powerful because not only does it take into account the setup of doing plunge attacks, but it basically redefines the plunge damage type to no longer be specific to just Xiao. Take this as a positive or negative depends on your perspective. Additional notes for her elemental burst, it's a 70 energy cost on an 18 second cooldown, and the duration of Star Wicker lasts for 16 seconds, so it basically has 100% uptime and fits in most rotations that are roughly 20 seconds long. So that's a majority of what she does meta-wise, but we also have her uniquely designed elemental skill. This basically also gives her the ability to Xiao over her opponents. Activating her skill puts her into a cloud state and uses Skyladder once. When she's in this state, her plunge attack is converted into a drift cloud wave instead and deals AoE and Nemo damage. She can use Skyladder, which is this hop, up to three times, including the first one, with each one increasing its damage and range of AoE. You can either wait between each hop and skip a run three times, or spam all three in quick succession to achieve decent height and then slowly drift down, and anything in between is also okay. At any point after a hop, you have about two seconds to left click, at which point you are forced to use Drift Cloud Wave. In this state, you can't normal charge attack because that left click immediately transforms her into the crane form for that plunge attack. 
The damage multiplier of her Drift Cloud Plunge attack receives a major increase at the third hop, so for those interested in that big number nuke, it would be from this ability. Additional notes for her elemental skill, a level 1, 2, or 3 Drift Cloud wave always generates 5 Anima Particles upon hitting at least one enemy. The ability is on a 12 second cooldown that counts down immediately after the first hop activation, so overall it's a pretty generous energy generating ability at about 1 particle every 2.4 seconds. C1 with 1 additional charge allows her to front load 10 Anima Particles with 2 quick casts of her E Plunged. For those interested in just using this ability to generate energy, you can just do 1 hop and then left click immediately for an immediate plunge attack. Tied to her skill is her Ascension 1 passive. Hitting enemies with her Drift Cloud Plunge attack grants all nearby party members stacking plunged crit rate for 20 seconds. This caps at 4 stacks, ranging from 4, 6, 8 to 10 percent, and each stack is counted on an independent 20 second timer. This means to gain a max 10 percent crit rate buff, her skill's plunge attack would theoretically have to hit 4 enemies at once. Obviously, if there's not enough enemies in the Spiral Abyss Chamber, as an example, you won't be able to max this out. Constellation 1 does help with this by granting an extra charge, but still would require 2 enemies minimum to double hit for 4 stacks. I would view this passive as a very minor buff to plunge crits, and expect the worst case of 4-6% to crit rate at all times. Normal charge attack. So Shen Yun is by default an Anemo Catalyst user. If we know anything about these type of characters, they can be super flexible as on-field drivers because their normal charge attacks are automatically Anemo infused. So while a majority of her uniquely designed kit is put into her burst and elemental skill, her normal charge attacks still can see some use if you want to utilize these infusions. She is also a ranged catalyst, so imagine her very similar to the on-field playstyle of Sucrose. Her build path is very different though, since she's an attack scaler and not elemental mastery, so she's not going to be as effective with her swirls. Talent Priority So because her attack transfer is on her A4 passive talent, it is not dependent on talent levels. The only thing besides damage increase that really matters is located in her burst, where her healing increases by talent. And of course, her elemental skill does have her highest multipliers for damage output, so if you want to go a DPS route, then feel free to invest. With that being said, general recommendation, elemental burst over elemental skill over the normal charge attack. Now, if you wish to run a full DPS Shenyun where she's doing plunge attacks, then you will need to invest into her normal charge attack because they are still used on top of her Drift Cloud Wave from her E. Playstyle so Xian Yun essentially allows any character that can deal plunge damage to become a decent on-field carry. Obviously, some characters have stronger plunge multipliers than others. Some characters have built-in infusion. You can infuse in characters with Pyro with C6 Bennett, etc. There's a lot of ways to use Xian Yun, and of course she can still buff someone like Xiao, who is already meant for plunge damage, or she can even buff herself and make herself a plunge damage dealer. The flexibility is really high here, but we're going to focus on a couple specifics to optimize the plunge playstyle. First is each category of weapons. So claymores have the highest punch multiplier, but usually have the slowest attack speed. Polearm and sword weapons both have the same medium plunge multiplier, and then bow catalyst weapons both have the low plunge multiplier. Claymores, polearms, and swords can be infused by C6 Bennett, or have their own infusion depending on the character. Catalysts are innately elemental, and bows, there's not really much we can do. They can't really be C6 infused by Bennett, and Tartag, who has a hydro infusion, still can't plunge attack, even with Shenya. Unlucky. Of these categories, there are still specific characters who have higher than usual multipliers than the rest. For Claymore, we have Deluc, who has the highest punch multiplier there. Polearm, we have Xiao at number one. Hu Tao starts at number two at level one. But at higher levels, weirdly enough, she scales the weakest and eventually has the lowest plunge multiplier out of any polearm user. Swords, Cause was number one, and for Catalyst, all characters are equal. These characters will naturally have a greater edge than other characters because they can deal slightly more damage naturally in the same circumstance. For Deluc, he has innate pyro infusion after his burst. Chao already plunges. Hu Tao has innate infusion. Kazua needs C6 himself or can use C6 Bennett. But in general, if the character can deal plunge damage and has some sort of elemental infusion by themselves or with help, Shen Yun can make them work. So let's talk about actual playstyle animations. For Claymores, they have a really long end animation for their plunge attack, but this can be cancelled with the dash. So for Claymore plunge attacks, expect to rotate the following combo on repeat. You jump, you plunge, and then you dash. Really just those three things, but the faster that you execute this, 
it kind of looks ballistic the way the claymore character plunges this dash cancel especially applies for claymores but actually can be used for all other weapon categories pole arms swords and catalysts pole arms and swords have a different and albeit sweatier rotation for maximized dps they have access to the n1 c j p combo this is n1 into a charge attack cancelled by a jump into a plunge attack you can further push this to its limits with N2 CJP by extending your N1 to N2. This combo needs practice. If you're experienced with Xiao or Hu Tao, these combos probably look similar to their rotations. With this rotation on Hu Tao, you can achieve vaporizes on her charge attack and her plunge attack in the most optimal situation. Here's what that looks like in practice. I'm by no means an expert and I would consider barely even practiced, but at least you can still see the demonstration on how the numbers add up. The better you are at this combo, the more quickly you can execute this sequence and becomes all the more satisfying done correctly. With this N1 CJP combo, you can even take characters out of their comfort zone and do this. Here's an example with the Raiden Shogun under her burst activation. Oh my god, it works! Dude, you can do N1C jump plunge! Catalyst can also execute the N1 CJP combo, or they can just wind up their N1 but not actually execute it and cancel the animation by jumping right afterwards. This can be done by constantly spamming left click on descent and then jumping when touching the ground. Obviously, this is a lot more effort to execute all these finesse techniques to plunge faster, and while they are beneficial, they aren't super necessary. Only do them if you want to. At the end of the day, Shen Yin just brings the Xiao playstyle to everyone. Damage increase. Quick visuals here to demonstrate the strength of Shen Yun's buff transfer. First, we'll do a bare bones comparison between just Xiao and then Xiao Shen Yun. My Xiao is very average investment with level 6 talents, so his personal damage isn't the highest, so please don't bully him. With Shen Yun, he was basically getting plus 30,000 crits for about 45 to 55,000 for the first 8 plunges, which is pretty good considering this isn't even a full team. Next, we'll do a comparison with Vaporize Deluke on a max buff team, including Farina, Shen Yun, and Bennett. In order to swirl Pyro in this team comp while also having the buffs active in order of longest duration, the following setup needs to happen. Farina's EQ needs to lead, and then Bennett needs 1E, his Q, and his N1 in quick succession to override Farina's Hydra application for a very short amount of time to apply Pyro. Then Shen Yun immediately comes after and swirls with either her normal attack, which is the fastest, or E plus plunge combo, which is slower because it has animation. This setup, when done correctly, briefly swirls Pyro during this small window at the start of the rotation and then swirls Hydro during Shen Yun's plunged E after Farina's summons hit it again. Bennett with just EQ is not enough to fully reduce Farina's Hydro Gauge, which is why N1 is needed. So, my Deluke also has a very average build, so please don't bully him, and I also put him on the milled flower because it just looks goofy and the vaporizes are abnormally enhanced by the increased elemental mastery. In the normal Deluke rotation, his damage output is pretty decent with some high hitting vapes. With the Shen Yun comp, Deluke's plunge attack you can see can vape every single hit, and also does not remove Farina's Hydro application for more vaporizes. The ceiling for this damage is astronomically higher, and can easily offset the loss from doing a normal rotation. If you manage to execute the dash cancels more efficiently than you see here, then you can easily chain more plunge attacks. The damage difference that Shen Yun provides is pretty evident no matter how you look at it, even if it only affects 8 plunge attacks per rotation. One thing that you will have to look out for, and unfortunately is kind of unavoidable, is the fact that you are pretty vulnerable to knockback during the small period where you are mid-jump pre-plunge. Getting hit out of this is a pretty big DPS loss because it kills the flow and also has like 1 to 2 seconds of knockback animation. Constellations. So for the most part, they are completely unnecessary for Shen Yun. The vast majority of players can achieve spectacular results with C0 Shen Yun and none of them are worth spending for in my opinion. As expected though, early constellations are the useful quality of life, with later constellations focused on making Shen Yun an elemental skill based DPS. C1, E gains one extra charge. There's two benefits from this. The first is double the energy particles, and second is higher effective value from her A1 passive talent that grants plunge crit rate from her E hitting enemies. So even if there's only one enemy, you can now still feasibly get two stacks, and only two enemies are needed to hit a max of four stacks. C2, using her E grants Shen Yun 20% attack for 15 seconds, and the buff value from her Ascension 4 passive is doubled, so from 200 to 400% of her total attack, capping from 9 to 18,000. If you want to invest in her for her buff value, this is where you should stop. 
C3, C5, plus three levels to skill and burst. But again, this does not help her buffing at all, just her damage multipliers and healing. So less value than normal from these constellations. C4, her E plunge gains an AoE heal when it hits opponents. Not really that useful considering her burst is a really good heal already. C6, after using her burst, her E skips cooldowns, allowing you to use a full three Skyladder plunge eight times. Using one, two, three Skyladders first increases the crit damage of the corresponding plunge by 15, 35, and 70%. It's a nice big damage boost reminiscent of Xiao C6 spamming his E with no cooldowns. Weapons. So with a character like Shen Yun, we've got the pure attack transfer style build, and we also have the high attack but also high crit rate crit damage because I want my Shen Yun to do damage because she has a cool flying ability build. And both of these builds I think are viable, with less time needed to discuss DPS options because essentially it follows the usual high crit rate crit damage build type. So let's cover her attack transfer weapons. In this category, we really prioritize two things, energy recharge and attack percent. This enables her to have high burst uptime, which enables her a 4 passive and allows everyone to plunge, and attack percent to reach as close to 4500 as possible. Base attack is important because it allows all your attack percent to scale a bit better, but way less valuable than guaranteeing she can burst whenever she wants, so energy recharge is still number one up to a point. We've got her signature Crane's Echoing Call, which is another buffing catalyst this time for plunge damage. Having a 741 base attack, minor secondary attack percent, granting plunge damage bonus to all party members, and restores a healthy amount of energy every 0.7 seconds, this is very clearly Shen Yun's best in slot weapon. With the last part of the weapon, granting a consistent amount of flat energy, as long as your teammates do plunge attacks, makes it more valuable than the ever so coveted Favonius weapon type that usually is the first choice for most supports that rely on energy. Most will not have access to this weapon, and I don't recommend pulling for it because it's really specific. So I hope that you have an event weapon from the past, Oathsworn Eye. This is the second best choice and will likely be the most popular weapon used for her because it's insanely stat efficient for Xian Yun. That's decent base attack for a 4 star weapon at 565, attack percent secondary stat, and R5 grants 48% recharge after using an elemental skill. It just works so well for how she's designed and boosts her recharge when she needs it the most. Besides those two universal choices, we've got the following others that have their pros and cons. Favonius Codex, it's our usual energy recharge choice, but it has low base attack and does require a little bit of crit rate for its passive. We have Prototype Amber, which gives an extra heal for the team and energy for Shen Yun, and also has low base attack. We also have Skyward Atlas and Memory of Dust, which are both attack percent stat sticks but have no energy. And the thing about this 5 star weapon is that the attack stat stick is usually not any better than the super common Thrilling Tales, which is a 3 star weapon, so base attack is very low, but grants 48% attack to the next character swapped in, most likely your carry. For this reason, personally, I'd recommend sticking with Thrilling Tales just because it's cost efficient and you probably have it leveled already. Both of these two weapons don't have energy recharge, so they are heavily reliant on your artifact quality being good enough to meet the energy recharge without weapon help. DPS weapons. So Shen Yun is looking for the standard crit rate crit damage, and if they have it, plunged attack damage. Weapons like Kagura's Verity will be deceiving because they give huge benefit to elemental skill damage, but Shen Yun's Drift Cloud plunge attack is considered plunge damage and not elemental skill, even if it's from activating her E. Now, if we look at our roster of 5-star weapons, we really don't have much that works specifically for her. Almost all of them, besides their secondary stat, grant normal attack damage, charge attack damage, elemental skill, but not generic additional damage bonus or plunge attack damage. So essentially, every single one becomes a stat stick. So this includes Kagura's Verity, like we mentioned before, Cash Flow Supervision, which is Risley's signature, Tome of the Eternal Flow, which is Nivellet's, and the Bell, which is Wanderer's. We also have Lost Prayer, which is pretty solid for her since she'll be on field for a decent amount of time for okay passive uptime if she's the main DPS. Otherwise, Nuvolet's Tome with the 88% crit damage stat stick will prove the strongest of the previous choices. So my personal recommendations for both types of builds, I would run Signature Weapon, Oathsworn Eye, and then Favonius Amber Thrilling Tales if you're doing a buff transfer build, and then for the other side, anything with crit goes for DPS. Artifacts. If you don't want to think too hard about things, just run Beardess and Venner. She's an Anemo supportive character, so VV is almost always going to be a best in slot choice for the resistance shred. There are still things you need to keep in mind though. The 4 piece VV effect only activates if Shen Yun is on the field. It will not proc on her Star Wicker coordinated attacks if she's off field. 
That being said, most of the time you will set up Shenyun right before switching to your main carry, so you'll have about 8 to 9 seconds of VV uptime. If your main carry is flexible and can switch between on and off field without losing important infusions, then of course, you can pop in Shen Yun, either use her E or simply just normal attack and swirl again and VV will reactivate. If not running VV, the second best supporting set is Song of Days Past. Yes, it does have a ridiculously long description, but basically all you need to know is if the character heals, then your team does more damage. And Song of Days Past affects all sources of damage output, which includes plunge damage. This set does become best in slot if Shen Yun is supporting a character that does not utilize VV Red Shred, which is namely Geo characters. Now if none of these are viable choices, which is totally fine, especially for new players, consider the original sets. 4-piece Noblesse for attack percent, 4-piece Clam set for extra damage from her bubble pop, and a 2-piece 2-piece combination that involves either attack percent or energy recharge from Emblem. Those that want to run Shenyun as her own DPS can consider the following choices. The only universal 4-piece set that benefits plunge damage is 4-piece Desert Pavilion. Just make sure that for Shenyun, you charge attack at the beginning of a rotation for that plunge damage increase for 15 seconds. The 2-piece also grants 15% Anemo damage bonus, which is perfect for her. Otherwise, 4-piece Mara Chalse is another set assuming that Farina is on your team to constantly drain her HP. Main stats. So, max buff Shen Yun's run one of two possible lineups. The easiest and most beginner friendly build is the ER attack attack build. This assumes no substats on a bare minimum build where energy recharge is on the timepiece, attack goblet, and attack mask. Unfortunately for this build, it's almost impossible to hit 4,500 attack to cap her A4 passive with this build. Then we reach to the optimize and quote can reach 4.5k build, which is triple attack main stat. This one will require energy recharge substats so that your Shen Yun can reach a decent level of ER. DPS Shen Yuns can run one of two possible lineups as well. There's a universal build, which is attack and emo crit. The mask depends on your crit ratio. And then there's the Farina specific build, which is attack, attack goblet, and crit mask. The goblet is still interchangeable with the Nemo though. It can typically run whatever has a higher crit value. And then a specific mention for C6 Shen Yuns. Highly recommend a crit rate mask, unless with her weapon you already achieve 90% plus. The reasoning for this is because C6 elemental skill spam grants an automatic 70% crit damage bonus, so you'd much rather have higher crit rate from her artifacts to maintain the consistency. Of course, if you want a huge big nuke for that screenshot, feel free to run a crit damage mask. Recommended stats. So minimum expectations, level 90 out of 90, and talents are unneeded, but 166 is probably the average investment. Support of Shenyun only cares about attack, energy recharge, and some crit rate if you're running Favonius. At level 90, it's still really difficult to hit 4.5k total attack. On average, you're going to be seeing a range between 3 to 3.5k. On Oathsworn Eye, you'll hover around 3,000, and with her signature weapon, you'll hover around 3.5k. 40% attack from Flower and Feather substats, which is about 20% each, will add an additional 400 to 500 attack on top of this, which these artifacts that you're seeing don't have. And then C2 can push even further with the extra 20%. Power resonance as well is possible. So yeah, in general, I think anything above 3000 is pretty reasonable. The builds that you're seeing right now also are running triple attack main stat. So if you run energy recharge timepiece, you're probably capping in the 3000 range. As a 70 energy cost burst user, I'd recommend at least 160% recharge for comfortable rotations. Mine here is pretty low, and I unfortunately don't have the best substats. DPS Shen Yun will have your stereotypical DPS stat distribution. She has attack ascension stat, so her crit rate naturally will hover around 70%, and then crit damage at 140% is probably the best case. If you run a crit rate or crit damage weapon, it can push this to 7200, and if you're C6, I'd prefer seeing a 90% crit rate to 150 crit damage ratio, since you'll be getting free 70% crit damage to have the non-visual total be 90 to 20. If you decide to run Mara Chose, then cap her crit rate at 64% and go as high as you want on the crit damage. Team comps. So if you really think about it, Shen Yun is kinda universal whether you like it or not. Her original design intention is to give plunge capability to everyone, even herself, or to buff those that already plunge. But she's also an emo and a catalyst user, which means she can fulfill the role of an on-field taser or swirler like Sucrose if you want. If you have C6 Bennett, then essentially every single character that can be power infused can work with Shen Yun and do fairly decent damage. We're going to categorize team comps pretty broadly so that you get the big picture on what the general structure is for certain comps. And before we deep dive into anything, the biggest fattest umbrella that encompasses a vast majority of really strong Shen Yun comps is none other than Farina plus Shen Yun combo. 
There's lots of benefits from this comp and specific best in slot team variations that come from this. So we have Farina and Shenyun that double dips in a lot of cases. Farina's damage bonus scales into Shenyun's attack transfer. Farina's AoE HP drain gets mediated by Shenyun's AoE HP heal. Farina's Hydro application enables Hunch Vaporizes, and Shenyun is an Anemo character and can hold Virus and Venerer. From this comp structure, we get the Shenyun specific plunge damage pyro oriented teams. We have a pyro DPS carry plus Bennett, which includes Deluke, Klee, Gaming, Dihya, maybe even Chinyan with C6 Bennett, of course. We have Hu Tao plus double Hydro plus Shenyun using the N1 CJP combo, and then C6 Bennett can carry by himself as well. These teams take advantage of the Farina plus Shenyun combo and deal very high amounts of damage due to plunge attack vaporizes. One of the pyro plunge DPS comms that deserves a specific mention revolves around our newest 4-star pyro claymore user, Gaming. This little bundle of energy specifically at C6 does an absolutely ridiculous amount of damage. His team comp follows the same setup as your typical pyro DPS, involving Shenyun, Farina, and Bennett. His damage rotation is simpler than other characters because his plunge attack isn't a true plunge attack and isn't burdened down by the animation lag. But he still gains all the benefits of having a huge multiplier as well as constant vapes on the plunge attacks and the damage counts as plunge attack damage. This 4 star at C6 is so strong it rivals competitive pyro DPSers such as Hu Tao under their optimal team setups. At C0, his damage falls off a bit and he lacks the quality of life that his other constellations give so it's significantly weaker. But if you do manage to get C6 and want to properly invest into him, he will not disappoint for single target damage. Now pretty related to the pyro plunged team archetype, there's also Farina plus Shenyun compositions that don't really abuse reactions and are more standalone. This includes carries like Xiao Farzan and also Noel double geo combo. The Xiao team doesn't really need an explanation on why it's good, but the Noel double geo may seem a little oddball. It's essentially a variation of the Farina Noel composition, except that Noel can geo infuse herself and also is a claymore for good plunge damage. If you don't have Farina to pair with Shenyun, then the rest of the teams are much weaker but still sustainable. Unfortunately, not having the Hydro Archon is a pretty big loss of total team DPS that isn't really replaceable with any other character thus far. The strongest of these type of teams are going to be anything that synergizes with C6 Bennett. This should come as no surprise, since the Bennett plus Farina plus Shenyun combo is the strongest buff-oriented team, and if you don't have Farina, then you're removing only one of the two sources of buffs. And C6 Bennett is basically the easiest character to make anyone else have an elemental infusion if they didn't have one originally. Beyond these synergies, team comps surrounding Shenyun become less and less unique to her original design. There's Mono Pyro Shenyun, which is not really any different than Mono Pyro Kazuha, except it's slightly weaker since Kazuha's scroll damage from his E and his Q is a significant part of the total team's DPS. We also have a comp like Mono Hydro Shenyun, which doesn't even need to use plunge attacks to deal a lot of damage. The Mono Hydro comps that use plunge attacks will probably use a Hydro Catalyst as the main carry because their attacks are already infused. And yes, while Candace does exist for Hydro Infusion from her burst, she does not grant any inherent buffs like Bennett does for attack scalers, so it's really debatable if that's worth a whole party slot. Otherwise, Mono Hydro comps can just normal attack with Shenyun on field and rely on strong raw damage sources like Xingqiu, Yelan, Farina. And lastly, a build that is far from her original design but tried and true to the Anemo Catalyst archetype, the Taser Comp. If you decide to run an Elemental Mastery focused Shenyun, she can totally be on field with her Hydro Electro off field supports. Just don't expect much healing because her attack will be pretty low. And that should cover an extensive amount of information to guide your Shenyun and her team to great success. I think that Shenyun is a fairly balanced and fun character that opens up the Xiao playstyle to the whole Genshin roster. She grants a lot of things to the team that are good, but definitely far from a broken or meta changing character. If you guys enjoyed the video and hopefully learned something, I'd appreciate if you liked the video and maybe shared it with your friends and fellow Shenyun owners so they can master her kit. As always, thank you guys for watching, good luck on getting your own Shenyun, and we'll see you next time. Take care.